patterns will be including are the introduction, the goals of isolation, the various methods how we can achieve the isolation, the advancements and the conclusion. So to begin with the introduction, we can say that it is important that we need to have the adequate control over the operating field that wherever we are working, we should have the control over that. So how can we achieve that if we have the proper moisture control, the good accessibility, visibility as well as the adequate room for the instrumentation. And along with that, we have to remember that we do not give any harm to the patient. That is the most important thing. So these are the various goals that we need to have the moisture control, the retraction in the axis, the harm prevention, the safe and the aseptic operating field. How can we achieve the moisture control using the various methods which we will be discussing. Moisture control means that we need not have to have any saliva, the gingival bleeding, the gingival fluid that all has to be eliminated. Also the water which is coming from the spray that is the aerators what we are using the restorative debris we should avoid that patient should not swallow then retraction axis so that we have the maximal exposure of the operating side. It involves the maintaining of the mouth opening. The proper mouth opening should be there so that we can work in the environment. Then no harm to the patient. This is very very important. You can see here this is an example where the patient has swallowed this endodontic file. So this can lead to a lot of trouble. So if we isolate our cavity or we isolate our operating field we can prevent these accidents to happen. Then what are the benefits? Like once we do the proper isolation, what benefit we will acquire? We will have the dry, clean operating field. We will have good access and visibility. We will have the improved properties of dental material. What do you mean by the improved properties? Because for example, there are certain materials. For, uh, for example, say GIC we are using. So GIC when comes in contact with the moisture like the saliva. So the reaction hampers, the properties hamper and we do not want that. Then protection of the patient from swallowing as I explained in the previous example then enhance operating efficiency. For example, if we do not have the any hindrance like saliva is there, the blood is there, the tongue is there. If they keep hindering our procedure then the time or the which we want to complete our procedure will be more also the operating efficiency will decrease. Then infection control because we are maintaining a aseptic environment. Then these are the various methods. First coming to the direct methods which includes the rubber dam, the absorbance, evacuation systems and the retraction devices. Then you have certain indirect methods which include first and the foremost making the patient comfortable, making him relaxed, he should not, he or she should not be very anxious, then using certain local anesthesia with vasoconstrictors or certain type of drugs like the anti silogogs the anti-anxiety drugs or the muscle relaxants. So coming to the rubber dam first. It was first developed by S.C. Burnham in 19th century and it helps us in eliminating saliva from the operating field that is it helps in maintaining the dry clean aseptic field and it attracts the soft tissue simultaneously. So again the advantages will remain the same if you are following the proper isolation then we can definitely achieve the isolation goals and we will have good visibility, retraction, dry feel. Uh, then reduces the injury of the soft tissue that is again very important we should not injure the adjacent tissues so that is again important then at the end it will all lead to the improvement of the operator's efficiency but while we are using the rubber dam there are certain problems which we can encounter like we can say that it is time consuming but it is only in the beginning it happens once you start using it it becomes very very effective and you'll just you might reduce the time to even one minute but that one minute will save your overall time for the procedure difficult to convince the patient but you have to convince your patient you have to explain the benefits that why it is better if you use the rubber dam rather than not using it what harm it could have then injury to the gingival tissues, yes, if you do not use it properly, you might harm the adjacent tissue, but you have to be careful while using the rubber dam. So there are certain conditions where you have to be careful like in patients who are asthmatic, they might feel suffocated, then patient with the braces, then patients where the tooth is very much destructed or you do not have a proper crown structure, then malaligned teeth. Then patients who are allergic to the latex and the patients who are mouth breathers. So you have to be very careful while using your rubber dam in all these patients. But we do have option that for example uh, for the uh, broken teeth we have different types of clams available for latex. We have the latex free uh, rubber dam sheets which are available in the market. So you have to find out the solutions to that. These are the various components of the rubber dam K. There is a 
there is a frame, there is a sheet, the lubricant, the punch, the faucet and the various types of clamps. Now there are certain recent advances, there are different types of rubber dams available in the market which makes it very handy to be placed like the dry dam, the optra dam, frame flexi dam, the opti dam, insti dam, they have made the procedure little simple. Then the absorbance, absorbance include the cotton rolls which is the most common one, each one of us is using it and they are mainly useful for the procedures like examination, the sealant placement, impression taking, topical fluoride application, cementation, they are just to be used for these procedures, not for the operative procedures. They can manually roll them or they are available as prefabricated in the market. Then cellulose wafers, they are mainly used for the parotid gland opening. So they have to be placed in the cheek like here so that the secretion from the parotid duct can be blocked and you have a moisture free environment. Then throat shield, this is almost like a god sponge of 2 by 2 inch size. It has an advantage that apart from providing the moisture control, it also helps in preventing the danger of aspirating or swallowing of the small objects, so it is very useful. Now coming to the evacuation systems, you have mainly two types, the high one and the low vacuum evacuation system. The high evacuation systems are used while you are doing a restorative procedures because they along with removing the water, they also remove the cuttings of the tooth and the restorative material and they even do not cause a dehydration and at speed at which they work is 150 ml of the water in one second, that much of water they can remove in one second. Then the low volume evacuators or the saliva ejectors, they are not very sufficiently strong vacuum. So uh, they are not used in alone, they have to be used in conjunction with the sponges, the cotton rolls, rubber dam. This is how they are being. So they are mainly used for the short procedures. Then coming to the retraction devices. So we have done the absorbent that is the moisture control has been uh, done. Now we have to retract the tissues because they also causes the hindrance like the tongue has to be retracted, the lips, the cheek, they all has to be retracted. So this is the most common thing which is being used, the mouth props. They are mainly used for the lengthy appointment or the patients who have difficulty in keeping their mouth open for a longer duration. So what do they do? They helps in the prevention of the muscle fatigue. So it is very comfortable for the patient as well as for the operator. They are available in different sizes, small, middle and large. Uh, depending on the patient's mouth opening, you can the small, medium or the large one. Then gingival retraction cord. Now sometimes in cases you also require to retract the gingiva like for the impression making procedures. So these are the cords, they can be used plain cords or the impregnated. Impregnated means that some kind of solution they are dipped into like vasoconstrictor solution they can be dipped into and they are also available in different types, the flattened, the knitted, twisted, braided, these are the different types and they are available in different color coding. Why they are color coded? So that you can identify for which tooth which type of cord has to be used. Now there are certain advancements in the isolation techniques like this is a dry angle which is available. It has a silver coating on one side so it helps in the complete moisture control. Then these are the new dry, they are also very effective in absorbing the moisture. Then the saliva ejector, this is lingua fix. What it does, it has this kind of a tongue like an attachment. So what it does, it helps in the retraction and simultaneously evacuation. So it, it serves two purpose at a time and because of the blunt edges it do not cause any injury to the patient. Then this is a Cividopter, this also has a mirror like reflector blade attached to it. You can see it here, this is the attached blade here. So this can be placed so it provides the retraction of the tongue and simultaneous evacuation occurs. Now this is the mirror wax saliva ejector, what it does, it has a mirror, mirror along you can see these holes, so they helps in the evacuation, so it is also serving the three purpose, mirror you can have, you can see in the mirror, then it has an evacuation system, it will suck and since mirror also helps in the retraction, so you have three purpose of isolation served with one instrument and this has an anti-fog acrylic mirror, that means so that it should not fog, that coating is also there. The next is the isolate system, this is a very very recent system, what advantages it offers? It provides continuous throat protection, illumination, retraction and isolation as well as it isolates both the quadrants simultaneously, this is very important, you can see it here, see 
This is isolating both the quadrant. It has a light system, so you can have good illumination. It is retracting the, <coughs> it is retracting your tongue. It is retracting your cheek. So simultaneously, it is almost serving all the purpose, all the goals of isolation which we want. Indirect isolation. So these were the direct methods. Now coming to the indirect techniques. There are just few of that. First of is the modifying the anxiety level. This is very important that your patient should be relaxed and non-anxious because why? Once a patient is more anxious, may have more salivation and it can lead to the interference in your procedure. So your patient need to be calm and relaxed. That can be done just by talking to the patient or sometimes drugs are required. We'll just see it here. Then local anesthesia with vasoconstrictors. What it does? It decreases the salivation. It makes the patient comfortable, less anxious because pain sensation is reduced. So patient is more less anxious, you can say. And also it helps in reducing the hemorrhage. It controls the bleeding sometimes. Then the drugs, they are not routinely used. They are only indicated for the patients who are uh, very, very apprehensive or some mentally challenged patients. Otherwise, routinely we do not use this uh, method of isolation. What drugs are used? Like you can use the anti silogogs or the anti anxiety. That means reducing the salivation using atropine or scopolamine, or for the anxiety purpose, you can use a diazepam, lorazepam, and sometimes even the muscle relaxants are being used, like cyclobenzaparine, carciprodol. These can be used. So, we can say that it is a thorough knowledge of the preliminary procedure reduces the physical strain on the dental team. Yes. Once the patient is comfortable, you have a good accessibility, visibility to your operating side. The physical strain on the doctor reduces, patient's anxiety is also less. So it will lead to the overall enhancement of the quality of the operative procedure. So achievement of proper isolation enhances successful outcome of the operative procedures as well as the operator's efficiency. These are the references you can refer to these books for this topic. Thank you.